Welcome to the electric two-wheeler comparison that we've all been waiting for. In the mint green corner, we have what is currently the best electric scooter on sale in India today. And in the white corner, we have the most legitimate rival to that claim. On paper, the Ola S1 Pro completely wipes the floor with the Aether 450X. But we don't ride on paper, do we? So let's see what the reality of the matter is. Before we do that though, please subscribe to the Autocar India channel if you want to see more comparisons like this and help us get to that 2 million subscriber mark. Now, back to the scooters. And the first impression is that these are both stylish and rather modern looking machines. The Aether's floating side panels and its unique rear LED lights still stand out today, even though the scooter is starting to become a familiar sight. The Ola in comparison looks larger and I find that its swooping curves, single-sided front suspension, the android-like headlamp and its fatter tyres all help it look even more futuristic. Ola has also made it appear like the scooter has a much bigger infotainment display, but this is just a clever optical illusion made by using extremely large bezels, and in fact, both scooters use a 7-inch TFT display, which is still pretty incredible for this segment and price point. Style is always a subjective thing, but there's no escaping that the Aether's level of quality and finish is on another level. Everything on the Aether, from the mirrors to the number plate holder and even the side stand feel extremely high quality. The Ola on the other hand doesn't impress when you take a closer look. There are inconsistent panel gaps all over. The left side pillion foot peg on our scooter didn't want to stay in place. The floor mats aren't secured well and the left side hand grip was installed at an angle. The Ola switch gear also looks very cool, but these switches give you almost no physical feedback, so you have to look down to find the button that you want to press. As for features, these are probably the highest spec made in India two-wheelers. The Aether has been the king in this regard for quite a while, with its rich TFT display, a reverse feature, Bluetooth connectivity, navigation, connected data, over-the-air updates and much more. But when Ola made its grand debut last August, it made waves with the promise of even more features. Some of these are quite mold-breaking, like the fact that the scooter doesn't have a physical key and it can be started either by using your smartphone as a digital proximity key or by entering a six-digit pin on the TFT display. In theory, this sounds quite futuristic, but in practice, it's a tedious, time-consuming affair where you have to press a button, enter the pin on the screen, then hold the brake and press another button before being able to ride. It doesn't help that the Ola screen is occasionally glitchy and slow to respond, and we definitely miss the simplicity and security of a physical key. Now, using a paired smartphone might be more seamless, but there's no way to be sure because that particular feature, along with many others, is not yet available on the Ola S1 Pro. The list of promised features that this scooter still doesn't have is quite long. It includes Bluetooth connectivity, navigation, music playback, cruise control, the display moods, it's all still promised for future updates. So as of now, the Ola is the better equipped on paper, but in reality, the Aether takes the win. The next area where the Ola significantly outdoes the Aether is in terms of what its powertrain promises to deliver. Now just from a feeling of refinement, both scooters produce an audible whine and some occasional mild vibrations under acceleration but the Ola is noticeably quieter and smoother in general. If you were to take a look at the motor specifications, you'll see that the Ola has a massive advantage over the Aether, not just in terms of peak power, but also in terms of outright performance. When we first rode the Ola at its launch event last year, its performance was clearly segment leading. But if you recall, we also reported that the scooter suffered from thermal issues in hyper mode, where the performance would be heavily restricted until the motor cooled down. It seems that Ola has made some changes to the scooter since we last rode it, because each of the four riding modes now seems dumbed down in the initial acceleration. When you first twist the accelerator, the response is very dull, and it's only once a scooter crosses about 25 to 30 km per hour that the performance you would expect starts to arrive. Our performance test reflected this as well, and mode for mode, the Aether 450X is actually quicker than the Ola up to 40 kph. Once you cross 50 kph, the Ola leaves the Aether behind, but that low-end zip that you would expect from an EV is missing unless you put the Ola in its fastest hyper mode. 
In city traffic, that low speed response is exactly what makes EVs so nice to ride. And this is probably why we were happy to ride the Aether in its lower ride mode for most of the time. Whereas the Ola didn't feel as satisfying unless it was in sport or hyper mode. Something else we noticed with the Ola is that it also has a significant amount of speedo error. At an indicated top speed of 115 kph, the actual true speed according to our VBOX is 99.8 km per hour. Nevertheless, that is still significantly quicker than the Aether's VBOX rated top speed of 80.3 kph. Clearly, the Ola's performance is a level above, but this comes with a catch. Now, despite Ola having toned down the performance in each of the riding modes compared to when we last rode this scooter, we still got a high temperature warning for the motor during our performance tests. In that time, the scooter automatically took itself out of hyper mode and locked itself into normal mode. After we waited about 10-15 minutes, things cooled down and the performance returned to normal. As for the Aether, well, we put it through the same series of tests in all of its modes and it performed just fine. It's also worth noting that we're having some lovely winter weather in Mumbai at the moment and who knows how the heat of the summer will affect the Ola in the coming months, if at all. Another thing that's a little annoying with the Ola is that the accelerator gets disconnected if you even lightly touch either of the brakes. Now this is something we've seen in most of the imported EVs that are flooding the market and it becomes a problem when you're trying to take a tight turn or filter through heavy traffic. That's because we tend to lightly use the brakes to bring in a sense of stability and confidence in these conditions. And on the Ola, you need to be careful because sometimes you may want the acceleration, but the scooter won't give it to you unless you fully release the brakes. The Aether doesn't do this, but it has a different issue. If you are a tall rider, you will find that the scooter feels quite compact and you have to remember to get your knees out of the way while taking tight turns or you can jam the handlebar in place. Now, while it is a physically smaller scooter, the Aether is also considerably lighter thanks to its smaller battery and fancy aluminium chassis. With its skinny tyres, the Aether's handling feels sharper and the same goes for its brakes. Both scooters have combined braking systems with disc brakes at the front and rear, although the Aether can still lock up its rear wheel quite easily. Compared to the more compact Aether, the Ola is much more spacious, it has a more comfortable seat and tall riders will definitely prefer it. As for that centre tunnel on the Ola's floorboard, I never really noticed it and it will only be an issue if you plan to carry large and heavy items on the floorboard. Sealing the comfort and practicality win for the Ola is its huge underseat storage space and even though the Aether's boot is quite good, the Ola's is much better. The Ola isn't just more spacious than the Aether, it's also more comfortable when it comes to the suspension setup. The Aether is a firmly set up scooter, not as aggressively so as the Aprilia's, but it is firm and more so than most petrol scooters. The Ola does a better job of absorbing bad roads and even that strange single-sided front suspension does a pretty decent job, especially when the bumps are rounded. If you hit a sharply faced bump, you will feel a bit of a thud, but overall, this is more comfortable than that. So now we've discussed design, performance and practicality. Let's get to the big one that you really want to hear about. How far can each of these go on a fully charged battery? Once again, the Ola S1 Pro completely trumps the Aether 450X with a battery that is 50% larger and the result absolutely shows in the real world. We rode the scooters through a variety of situations, including through heavy jams and on wide roads with fast moving traffic. The simple rule was to ride naturally and flow with the traffic. Now it's important to understand that EV range is quite sensitive to a number of factors, including rider weight, riding style, ambient temperature and even the level of inclines on your roads. But our test results will give you a fair idea of what to expect. With both scooters in sport mode, we got a respectable 74 km from the Aether, but the Ola really impressed with being able to cover just over 100 km. In our second test, we kept the Aether in ride mode and the Ola in normal mode and the numbers were even better. This time, the Aether covered 88 km and the Ola managed a fantastic 127 km. These figures are very real-world usable and are particularly impressive on the Ola's part. However, we learned the hard way not to trust the Ola's range indicator because on both runs, the battery suddenly went dead when the display told us that there was still 10 kilometers of range left. In comparison, the Aether's range indicator was amazingly accurate and completely trustworthy. 
Charging the flat batteries with the provided portable chargers took about four and a half hours on the Aether, while the Ola's bigger battery needed over seven hours. Neither of these scooters have removable batteries, but both companies are investing in fast charging networks across the country. Honestly though, most customers should manage just fine with charging at home. It's also safe to say that both these EVs are good enough for you to happily switch over from a petrol scooter if your daily running distance allows for it and if you have easy access to a charging point. However, there is no doubt that the Ola scooter has taken the game ahead, especially in terms of reducing that terrible feeling of range anxiety. Aether has offered a fantastic scooter all these years, but with this new competition, it needs to up its game, especially given its premium pricing. So to sum things up, the Ola is the faster scooter, it has the better range, it is more comfortable and it's a good deal cheaper than the Aether, especially when you factor in national and state level subsidies. In Maharashtra, for example, this thing isn't a whole lot more expensive than a premium 125cc scooter. Sounds like a pretty open and shut case, doesn't it? Well, not quite. For starters, Ola's home delivery and service model still has a lot to prove. Even at the relatively low numbers being dispatched at the moment, the company's social media is full of customers complaining about delays, issues with registration or a general lack of communication. Whether Ola can smoothly ramp this up to match its huge production ambitions is something only time can answer. Then there are complaints with quality and the buggy software, but you could forgive this considering that this is the first product from a brand new company and Ola is working towards addressing its customers' complaints. Another more significant worry is the fact that the scooter is still having performance-related thermal issues and this happened to us a second time while shooting on some hilly areas in South Mumbai. But again, hopefully this is something that Ola will eventually be able to sort out. However, in recent weeks, a few customers have started sharing instances of a much more serious fault where the scooter unexpectedly goes into reverse even when the rider has selected a forward riding mode. At this point, the issues with the Ola S1 Pro stopped being so innocent. This is something that happened with our scooter as well, where the screen shows that it's in normal forward riding mode, but when you twist the accelerator from a standstill, it shoots backwards without any warning. That's scary, dangerous, and just unacceptable for a production vehicle that is available to the general public. And this is something that echoes concerns that we and others have shared, that Ola simply hasn't done enough validation testing for this product before putting it on sale. So with the Ola being a more compelling buy, since it beats the Aether in most areas, while being a whole lot more affordable, it should have been a convincing winner in this test. But due to the serious glitches we faced, we cannot recommend the Ola just yet. Not until the company clearly addresses these critical bugs and problems, and it can reliably offer what was initially promised. Until then, the tried, tested, and proven Aether 450X remains the safer buy. The old... It's again catching your Bob Marley's kashakal here. So, it's changing focus? Yeah. Should we hide it's, Marley it's, uncle's it's face? Close. The Aether is a firmly set up scoosh... Scoosher? Scooshar! Scooshak. Skoda Scooshak. Another one. Uh, you should not say this, but this. <laughs>